Greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the place where you learn the Bible. I hope even these meditations on the cross are indeed reviving your life just like how it is reviving mine. Today we are going to meditate one of the words or the last word that Jesus spoke before the cross. Before the cross. We usually talk about the words that Jesus spoke on the cross. But today I want to talk to you on the word, the last word that Jesus spoke before he was nailed to the cross. When you read Luke chapter 23 and verse 28, Luke chapter 23 and verse 28, it says like this, but turning to them who were them in verse 27, a large crowd of people were following him, women who were mourning and lamenting him. You know, there was a large crowd which said, crucify Jesus. There was a large crowd who wanted Jesus dead. But at the same time, there were also a crowd. There were also a group of women who wanted Jesus not to be dead. They were mourning. They were crying out to Christ. It was at that time. It was at that time. Jesus turns towards them and he says, daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. I think the response of Jesus to those who were crying for him was shocking. Jesus was in so much pain. You know, just before this, he was pat upon. He was put a crown of thorns on his head. He was flogged. He was marred. He, he was pushed down. The cross was heavy. The cross fell on him. And he was too weak to carry it anymore that the soldiers made a man by the name Simon from a town of Siren to carry the cross for Christ. It was in such weakness and in pain as Jesus, as blood was dripping from his face. You know, these women would have seen Jesus in glory. They would have seen Jesus in, in, his, in his majesty. But now here is that same man dripping with blood, face torn, skin ripped apart. And they cry for him. And Jesus says, hey, come on, guys, don't cry for me. Don't cry for yourself. Cry for you and for your children. Why are you crying for me? You know, that was not the response. I would expect when I cry for somebody else. You know, he didn't even show a little appreciation for that. He didn't even show a little gratefulness for the support, for the moral support that he was receiving. Instead, he stops there, turns towards them and he says, Hey, cry for yourself and your family. This is nothing. What you're going to face might be worse. Cry for yourself. I believe it was at this point Jesus was communicating, Hey, I am going to defeat death. Cross is just an agent through which I'm going to defeat death. I'm going to defeat hell. I'm going to defeat that devil. Don't waste your tears on me. Don't waste your tears for me. In fact, I would say, Good Friday is not a day to feel sorry for Jesus. Let me stress this again. On these days of Lent, and on Good Friday, please don't feel sorry for Jesus. Jesus does not need your sympathy. He doesn't need our sympathy. Yeah, today we think, you know, we are feeling very sorry for Christ. <laughs> but Good Friday is the day he triumphed over the devil. You know, today I, I know many people, I, even, in, even in my family, have done it when we were young. What they, what they used to do is... On Good Friday, they don't make anything. You know, it is as though uh, somebody has died in your house. And at the maximum, they will make that kanji, what they call it is in Tamil. It looks like a porridge. You know, nothing is there in that. You know, some rice, some dal. Nothing is there in that. But I'll tell you, Good Friday is a day where you have to have the best meal of your day. If you are a Tamilian, have a biryani. Enjoy your meal because that was the day. Jesus defeated death, hell and the devil. That was the day Jesus secured your victory. And that is what Jesus says here. Hey, come on guys. 
Why are you crying for me? Cry for yourself. Cry for your family. The point that Jesus was trying to drive is twofold. One, this is the day where I am going to defeat hell. Second, don't weep for me. Weep for your sin. Repent and weep for your sin. Re re weep for your evil actions. Weep for your evil words. Weep for your evil thoughts. Weep for your, for your next generation. Which is going to face worse troubles than what you are facing right now. You know when Jesus said these words. Don't weep for me. Weep for yourself. Jesus is asking us to come back to him in tears. Just like how 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10 says, Godly sorrow, godly sorrow produces repentance. It is godly sorrow that produces repentance. A sorrow that is in accordance with the will of God produces repentance without regret. We need to have godly sorrow. We need to have godly sorrow. You know, they say, if you are a Christian, you should never cry. You know, there is this one funny group which laughs around in worship, saying that this is laughing in the spirit anointing. But here Jesus says, weep for yourself, man. Cry for you. Cry for your children. So I want to ask all, all parents, when was the last time you cried and prayed for your children? Is it only when they are sick? Is it only when you go through some tough times or is it a habit where you weep for your children every day? When, when was the last time that we cried for ourselves? Not because you didn't get something what you wanted. When you cried for yourselves because of the sinful life that you are living in. David lived in sin, enjoyed in sin till Nathan could come and say, hey, you are that man. But when he said that, he realized how sinful he was and he pens Psalms 51, Psalms 51 and he cries out to God, be gracious to me, wash me, I have sinned against you, my sin is before me, against you and you only have I sinned, I was brought forth in iniquity, purify me with his soap, wash me, make me hear joy again. Hide my face from you. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Renew your spirit. Do not cast me away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation. Sustain a willing spirit in me. Today, I want to conclude with this. You needn't feel sorry for Jesus, but feel sorry for yourself, for your family. I needn't feel sorry for Jesus. I have to feel sorry for my own carnal desires, my own sin, my own deeds. And I need to get back to God in right terms. I need to reconcile with God. May these words, may today's devotion lead you into repentance to God. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.